I was around six when I first heard the term unapologetic. To young me, that term embodied negative connotations. Someone had done something wrong and refused to apologize. I wondered, why would anyone want to be that? But as I grew older, I saw how it was being represented in the media. And I realized, maybe this word might have a more profound meaning. My epiphany started with a quote from one of my favorite books, entitled Chin Tu by Jennifer Nansubuga Makumbi. It read, You found yourself on earth without design on your part. Along the way, you realized that there were three human species, and you belonged to the worst. I moved to Nairobi when I was four. My dad had found us a house in a predominantly Asian neighborhood, but this never bothered me. Well, not until we got new neighbors. You see, when my new neighbors moved in, we immediately became the best of friends. We were always outside in the neighborhood, playing hide and seek, riding our bikes, making mud cakes, doing what it is that 12-year-olds like to do. But you see, their mom didn't like me, and I wasn't allowed to enter their house because she said I was dirty. I didn't realize it was because I was black until my younger friend suggested that I paint myself white so that I could attend their party. Keeping in mind this is from the perspective of an Indian. After the incident, I didn't run and tell my mom. No. I just took my shame and accepted it. When I was 12, I realized that black girl was the worst species. Luckily, my friend Megan from school came over and reminded me that just how pathetic I was being. We were outside playing, my two neighbors, Megan and I, when my two neighbors decided that they would go inside the house and get a ball. As they went, Megan told me, I explained to Megan why we weren't allowed in their house. What Megan said next reminded me of why we became friends in the first place. She said, I don't care. And she walked right in. As much as it's wrong to invade a space like this, Megan taught me that there wasn't anything wrong with me. I wasn't dirty because I was black. If anything, my melanin made me shine. So fast forward to a few months ago when I read that quote in Chin Tu. It immediately reminded me of the situation because I was made to feel as though my race was inferior. To make it worse, I learned about racism in school, but I couldn't even recognize it in my own life. Why? Why did some people feel as though they were better than others, even though we all found ourselves on earth without design on our part? Why do we feel the need to rank ourselves through things that we never even chose? I hate that I can't answer that. But what I learned from the situation was what it really means to be unapologetic. It's knowing that you're entitled to as much as everyone else on this earth, and that you're equal no matter what. But most importantly, it's believing this, because if you don't, then you might as well just hand your apology on a silver platter. According to Whiskey Rift 2016, the odds of you being born exactly how you are is less than one in four hundred trillion. So obviously you weren't a mistake. Obviously we were all meant to have different characteristics, so we don't even have time to seek validation in others. We don't even have time to feel sorry for ourselves. Unapologetic. After my epiphany, 
I started seeing more and more instances of apologeticness throughout my social bubble. I would see it in the way my friend wouldn't raise her hand in class because she'd be ashamed if she got the answer wrong. I would see it in the way my friends and I would dress up to go out. We wouldn't wear certain clothes because we didn't want to show our stretch marks. I would see it in the way my guy friends wouldn't act a certain way because they didn't want to be seen as gay. It was then that I decided that I would be the opposite of apologetic. It meant not being afraid to not wear a bra. It meant not caring that some people might not like my taste in music. It meant not giving in to people who I knew didn't like me. Simply put, it meant not being ashamed. And this brings me to an integral part of my identity, feminism. Believe it or not, the first time I identified as a feminist was not because I watched an inspirational video about the inequalities of women in the world. I mean, I got that, but I never really called myself a feminist until someone else did. You see, I love football, but as a woman, I've never really felt like I belong on a football pitch. I mean, how can I when all the shows on TV are men's leagues, right? But because of my pact, I could no longer allow myself to be apologetic about being a woman playing football. So I began to speak up about the issues that bothered me, those small things that I grew up with that led me to be apologetic, like the fact that boys never tackled girls because they didn't want to hurt us. I earned a lot of backlash for it. I got comments like, don't you have to go back to dorms? Or, girls should stick to academics. And of course, the all-time favorite, which I never even knew people still use. Women belong in the kitchen. But amidst all the talk, someone somewhere called me a feminist. And I was. I wasn't even sorry about it. I was the definition of unapologetically feminist. So I met my goal. I would walk around feeling myself as if I was untouchable. I was me and I didn't care what anyone had to say about it. It would be nice to end here to say that that's all you need to do. Just, just be unapologetic. It's that easy. But of course, it never is. And I didn't realize that there were other aspects of my identity that needed to be reconciled under my newfound unapologeticness. And that was my culture, my African background. I'm Ugandan. In Uganda, we have tribes. And my tribe is known as the Buganda Kingdom. Now, my tribe is further divided into clans, which is like close family, direct relatives. And my clan is known as the Avalangira. I'm in love with my culture. The amazing food, the wedding ceremonies, even the language. You should hear the expressions. Gwe. Ibanange. To put it simply, I put my time and effort into learning about my culture. And the more I do, the more I fall in love with it. But somewhere beneath all the traditions, I found myself in no man's land with my culture. I was at border territory. I found that I could not belong as a feminist. Now, I'd like to tell you the reason why, but first I'd like to start with some context. You see, I take the clan of my dad. Every child in the kingdom takes the clan of their dad. And you can't marry someone of the same clan because it's considered incest. So my mom and my dad belong to different clans. Anyway, last year my dad's mom passed away and we went to the village to bury her. It was a perfect ending to a love story as she was buried right next to my grandfather, her husband. At the burial site, my dad showed me how my ancestors were buried in chronological order from my great, 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 great grandfather, Bazalanguzi, who was born in the 1800s, to my grandmother who had just recently passed away. 
My dad took me on a mini tour, telling me the stories of my great-grandfathers, their wives, and how the family line finally got to me. I felt special that I too would be buried along with such a rich heritage. But you see, that right there was the problem. Because I was a girl, I was not meant to be buried there. None of my great-grandmothers were buried there, and none of my aunties are to be buried there. We are to be buried along with the clans of our husbands, just like my grandmother. To make it worse, my children won't even take my clan. This clan that I have cherished and learned about my whole life, and you're telling me that because I am a girl, I can't even name my children my clan names? Because I am a girl, I cannot carry on the family name, but let me give you something to chew on. Every Kironda in my generation is a girl, so in essence, the family line is done. I'm the youngest. I have two older sisters and two older girl cousins of the same clan. After they were born, I'm pretty sure my parents knew that if I wasn't a boy, then there would be no one to carry on the family name. But I wasn't a boy. And in a way, I feel like I let them down. Don't get me wrong, my parents have never made me feel like I'm any less because I wasn't a boy. But still, I knew I should have been born a boy. There, I said it. I was apologetically a girl. But how could this make sense when I'm unapologetically feminist? I cherished my culture, but I couldn't ignore the subtle sexism in it. I'm unapologetically Muganda and unapologetically feminist, but I'm not even sure that these two can coexist. How can I intertwine these two identities into one whole system that makes me me? Or is it that they're two pieces of a different puzzle? Can I really be unapologetically feminist in a cultural context, be it Mulangira, Ugandan, African? Can anyone be unapologetically feminist in a cultural context? You see, this is what I like to call the paradox of the African identity, and we, as African youth, are the victims. We're trying to take the positive aspects of the modern world without realizing that, without, while still trying to keep our culture, without realizing that maybe the two don't coincide. So do we have to choose one? And if we choose one, does the other disintegrate? There are so many parallels between our African generation and that brought out by Chinua Achebe in Nolonga's ease. We're stuck between a culture and a modern world. Sadly, this leads to the destruction of the main character in Nolonga's ease. So will we too self-destruct? A friend once told me we live in a society. Sometimes I feel like I live in multiple. The two aspects of my identity that I hold most dear to my heart clash, but still I must be seamlessly and unapologetically me. How? Thank you. <laughs>